I think last time we have considered that the same model of what we have created. OK, and for today's session, I'll be like creating uh, or exporting only the structural model. Uh, what I have right now. OK, so this is a structural model right now I have with me. So I'm exporting this particular structural model. OK, as an IFC file because uh, either or if you uh, you can easily export as a NWD as well, but I have not installed that uh, file format. OK. So for timing, I'll be exporting this file as a IFC. OK, so if you go here to the IFC and here you can just give the setting IFC 2 by 3 coordination view and just export it onto the desktop. OK, so wherever you want to export, you just export it and just export it. OK, the same process uh, basically you need to follow for the uh, NWD doc. NWC or NWD file as well. So only instead of IFC, you will find the icon uh, either as a NWC or either as a NWD document. OK, so only you need to export as a NWC. OK, why NWC? Because this is the only one model right now we have. Similarly, we have also uh, structural uh, volume 3, volume 1. OK, like the part of the multiple structural model. Also, we have the MEPF model. Also, we have the architectural model. So all NWC basically we need to append or we need to insert inside the Navish work manage. OK, so here once you install or once you uh, append everything inside this Navish work, so here you will find all the NWC files. OK, and finally when you are saving the document as a NWD, then we need to convert this file as a Navish work document file that is NWD. OK, so for timing, if you go here, just click on append, go to the desktop mode and for all file, just search for the IFC. OK, so here we have the IFC file format. OK, and just hit open. OK, so now you can see the complete model has been. Open inside the Navish work. OK, so here you can see. Because we have not considered the volume one section, which is at the bottom part, so this is only volume two if you see here. OK, so I have divided the entire model into the three phases. So right now we have only volume one with us. If you want to have a look, you can actually even uh, like just create as a walkthrough as well. You just need to slightly run like this from inside the model, whether you want to check the model progress, whether all the elements or all the 3D elements what you have created, whether it is properly created or properly attached. You can just check it like this. Okay, just have a proper. Walkthrough. OK, so if you want to climb this staircase as well, so how you can climb you just need to turn on the gravity tab over here. So just click on the collusions and click on the gravity. OK, then if you see it will be going. Like this. It, it will be climbing the proper path. similar like this. If you want to jump suddenly, you just uncheck this again and you can slightly cut it off. So you can even go from floor to floor and you can easily check it. So after this, like once you open the complete part, then you have a clash detection option. Just click on this. OK, and here you need to clear, create a new test first of all. OK, so what against what you need to run this test? So let's say I'll be 
running the collision check against column versus beam. Okay, then I'll go here inside this okay, the tables. Okay, now again here it will ask you uh, for which column or for which level columns. So right now we don't have anything. Okay, so we can randomly because here the entire building is divided into the number of floors. Okay, so in under each and every floor you will find the beams and uh, columns. If you see here, see the basic wall you will find. So if you go to the measurement floor level, so beams, columns, slabs, stairs, and the uh, wall standard cases. So these are the elements basically we have inside the model okay so now uh, how we can run the collision test so if you want to run uh, with respect to the level wise either you can select the level and then run the collision check or else uh, we discuss about the sets okay so how we can create a set so if you want to create a sets go here click on the manage sets and here just select the element and create a set over here so how we can create it simply go here uh, default level then uh, ground level for all ground level, I want to select the beam. So you can see for ground level, all beams has been selected. Just see. Okay, all beams has been selected. And similarly, you can select all the levels, select beam. See, for all the levels, I'm selecting the beams. Like this. So right now I'm I'll be selecting like this. OK, I'll select up to the sixth floor, not beyond that. And yes, up to here. You can see all beam has been selected and then I will create a set for this. OK, so search set. First to sixth slab beam. Set OK. OK, now if, if I'm selecting this set, you can see all beams are highlighted within one click. Now if I want to run the sets again, this versus this, so how to create it? Similarly, what I will do, I'll select the columns for all levels. OK, column one, column two, column three, column four, column five, column six, sorry, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, you can see up to this level, all columns have been selected now. Now I'll again create a set for column. So first to sixth column. Okay. You can see all beams highlighted, all columns highlighted. Now I want to run the collision check against the sets, not as a discipline. Then what I will do, I'll go to this one. Okay, here I will rename column as a beam. Okay, and now instead of standard, what I will do, I'll simply select the sets because right now I have a sets created with me. So you can see these two sets has been created. Here also I will select the sets. Okay. Now whether you want to run the collision check against beam versus beam or column versus column or column against beam and uh, beam against columns, whatever it is, because we have two sets right now. OK, so I want to run the collision check against one to six all beam and one to six all column. OK, and here you have the tolerance value. Okay, and just hit run. OK, so you can see there is a no single collusion we are finding out in this model. Because all this beam and collision checks are properly assigned. Okay. Now similarly, instead of sets, we'll go to the standard level. Okay. We'll select entire project and we will say create a run collisions because the entire model we are concerned. So if you see here, some floors or some beams are clashing with the uh, slab level. See, like this. Okay, so here wall is clashing with this element. So such kind of a clashes you will find here. Okay, and once you find out this clashes, you can easily export these reports 
as a HTML file format. So right now here we have 647 clashes. Okay. Similarly, just go to the HTML tabular form and export the report. On desktop. OK, so if you want to see. Just go to the desktop. OK, here you will find this HTML document. So if you open this, okay, you can see the detailed analysis. For all the clashes, which element at what location? OK, so here this particular grid location is at the uh, overhead water tank. So where somewhere this beam is clashing or this element is clashing with this lab level. OK, so which element it is? OK, if you see. This is the coming element from the rectangular column basically which is clashing with the. Uh, foundation slab. OK. So on which layer? Layer 5, parking number, parking 2 and parking 3. So in between these two, uh, uh, what we can say? The bit between these two level, these elements are clashing. OK, so if you want to reduce these clashes, so we discussed about the one grouping uh, option. OK, how to group the clashes. OK, so for this, if you want to see, let's say I want to group this element. OK, I'll just select the increase you and you can see for this element how many clashes we have. So I'll just select it. And I'll create a group. You can see this. OK, for one floor, this many columns are clashing. OK, so this is not a major clash. Why? Because this element is slightly touching to the surfaces. OK, if you see. Slightly touching to the surfaces. Similar kind of a clashes you may find for all the levels because when we are creating the column, we are inserting or we are attaching this column top to the the above surface floors. OK. But here. It is slightly overlap means either I have not attached uh, this ends or maybe I just forgot to attach it. OK, so if you want to attach like how to attach it. So if you go to the this one and I want to attach something. So if you see this element here, you will find the option attached to top and base. Simply I need to click this element, select it here and select the surface. So you can see the column is already attached. It will be detached and attached to the new target. So if you are attaching like this also, so then also it will be showing as a clash, but, but this is not a valid clash. Why? Because whenever we are attaching the element and it, uh, the one element uh, like slightly touching to the other element, it means it's showing the clash. So in that scenario, we need to. Define this tolerance value. So right now if you see we have found out around 4 647 clashes. So if I change this value slightly, let's say 0 0.05 like 5 centimeter. OK, and then if I run the collision check, you can see. Still this much of uh, clashes are, are finding out. Why? Because this element is majorly clashing with the other. Because this is for slab thickness is uh, around only 150 mm. No? And which is this element is completely clashing with the entire slab. So if I increase this um, uh, up to the 150 or 15. OK, still it is clashing. Sorry. You know it is showing with the uh, new cost only. Okay, I'll again create a test. This one, this one, and here I will put 0 0.05. Now you can see. So here we have around 647 clashes. Now with respect to the new test, we have found out 604. Just because of this one value. Okay, so always this value will be changed according to your design standard. OK, so it will be. Uh, during your design or kickoff meeting, this value will be uh, finalized according to the tolerance values like uh, maybe how much accuracy the consultant or the architects wants. Based on that, uh, basically they are defining this uh, figure. OK. So this is how we need to perform it 
and once we have created the entire things we need to export the report as a html file format so and this reports basically to be shared with the consultants okay and they are like looking into these reports okay and then they are resolving these clashes okay so definitely one thing we are actually not uh, reviewing all the because sometimes maybe this clash count is into the thousands maybe 3000 4000 like this so this is very difficult to review each and every clashes okay so this is the reason why we are grouping the one element which is clashing with the multiple objects okay so how we have group recently okay so this one similar to this manner only we are grouping okay so you can see this is only one clash so if you do like this then maybe that 2000 3000 counts will reduce up to the 100 and 200 clashes and then you can export the reports and then only you can share across the project team members 